Why did you take on the role? Why, what attracted you to Jericho? Um, the authenticity of it. You know, um, I like um, that he could have existed in this environment. You know, um, I like that um, that you, you've, you've taken a frontier town which existed here in England, right? And that all of a sudden you're going to turn it around to be a western. <laughs> These places existed here, but they haven't been exploited by the British as of yet. Morning. I bought you some rations. Can't possibly take your food. I can't. <laughs> uh, George. Every mouthful of banquet. There's really no need, sir. We're just on our way to market. Ma'am. I can't survive without a favor every now and then. Maybe someday you can pay me back again. Also that, you know, that horses are involved. I love horses. You know, and the importance of a horse in both the settling of the West and here was very important. Over here it was sort of forgotten about, you know. Someone says, you didn't have a horseman here. I'm thinking about, how about Dick Turpin? You know, you had horsemen here forever. You know, come on, you know. So you just haven't looked at it in the same, in the same light, yeah. Um, so I, I, uh, when it was first offered, I, I asked uh, my agent, first of all, you know, if I'd like, to, I'd like to see more scripts, number one. Number two, um, I just don't want to be doing a, a role just because of commodity, you know, I've said this before, you know, um, you're that guy from The Wire, so we know if I put you here, someone's going to watch. No. Um, I'm an actor who played a role in that, you know, and that was a good thing to do. It was a good role and it was a good part, and I'm very grateful for that. But that comment is finished. This is a different comment, you know, and so let's do this. And if you think I'm the right person who can give voice to that, let's do it. If you don't think I'm the right person to put voice to that, I'm fine with that too. You know, um, and it seemed like I was the right one to put voice to this. You certainly were. I mean, Ralph is a great character. And Thank just, 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 parking the <clears throat> just parking the historical element, he's just a great character. Yeah, yeah. I mean, all that happens in a day. <laughs> all, that, all that happens in a couple of days. I'm thinking like, wow, man, what he couldn't do. <laughs> <laughs> so he comes in, he sees opportunities, um, he, he creates his own opportunities? Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, in, in one respect, he's his own worst enemy in, in, uh, for his own conscience, as we'll see further down the line. Yeah. Um, but he knows, he knows the business. Yeah. And in knowing the business, he knows how to manipulate it. Yeah, which is what he does in the first couple of episodes. Yeah, and it's, and it is intriguing. I really, I, I really like Coates. I really dig Coates, man. Yeah. Yeah. He initially he's he's kind of he can't make him out. He's a good Samaritan to Annie, mm. but then with the with the key, mm. it seems like he's capable of bad things. I know he is. You know how much can I tell you guys right here on this on this right now? You know. Um, there's some stuff with the key, and that is the key. <laughs> oh, God. Um, <laughs> I'm going to be as enigmatic as I possibly can uh, okay. to keep them watching. <laughs> <laughs> but ultimately, um, is he the villain of the piece? Um, I hope not. I really hope not. Yeah, I'm... What we've seen is that, is that um, you get villains and then you get victims, you know, and they can be one and the same, depending on how you're looking at his circumstance. Um, you don't know yet why he's brought here. You don't know yet why he's done the things he's done. Um, this is what I was saying, like, you know, he's, he, yeah, there's a conscience, he does have a conscience, you know, that I regret. You may not think so, but you'll find out that he does. 